So you've went out and bought yourself a small CNC that's capable of cutting metal. It's robust enough to cut metal. And you really wanna cut a bunch of aluminum or steel or something like that. You may think about a model just like this, this is the Gen Mitsu uh, 3020 Pro Ultra. And um, it's small, it's, it's almost portable it's small. You could literally put this in a box and take it to a job site. It certainly looks and feels robust enough to cut metal. But for cutting aluminum, the CNC is really only, from what I can tell, part of the equation. The other parts of the equation are having a good bit. Um, the second, third part of the equation is milling the right kind of material, an aluminum that's hard enough to be able to cut correctly with these bits and not gum up and stick it, weld itself to the bit and uh, ruin your bit and ruin your cut, et cetera, et cetera. Material is very important and the choice of material. And the fourth thing, which is extremely important, is software. The only software I have right now is Easel. And Easel and Vetric and you know some of these other CNC softwares, really they're made for wood cutting. And wood cutting could not be more different than aluminum cutting. Aluminum has to be, or any metal has to be approached so differently. It has to be approached so carefully because the penalty for not appro approaching it carefully is just terrible cuts. Um, breaking or even worse, uh, welding material to your bit with the extreme heat. From what I've, my research, the best solution for milling metal is um, the tool path. And it's an adaptive tool path that slowly carves away the material. It's sensitive to the kind of heat buildup that uh, can happen when you're milling aluminum. Um, and it's using sort of more of the dimension, the true uh, capacity of the bit. Um, it's slowly like digging away at it rather than making the same kind of uh, milling operations that you would do with wood. You may think all your problems are solved when, when you get the CNC, but really it's only one part of the equation. You're really gonna have to think about the other parts of the equations. That said, um, I'm just gonna jump right in with these cheap, Chinese bits, and uh, more importantly, I really, I have Fusion 360, but I just haven't learned how to use it yet. So I'm actually gonna go back to my familiar program, which is Easel, but Easel is just sadly underdeveloped for this type of cutting. Um, I'm just gonna try my best. I'm gonna try and do as much pocketing as I can um, and be as gentle as I can to the material, take it nice and slow and we're gonna see how it goes. So this is what I'm actually gonna be making. I have a wood version of this. So basically it's a ruler uh, embedded in a block and you've got like a little slot that you can move this in and out. This is really helpful for when it comes to marking things. Say I can set it at like two inches. I can lock it down with this knob and I can you know, just, just make a mark to, uh, to measure something in. I want to make a metal version of this and I want this part to be smaller because it's always awkward for smaller things. And I want to make it out of aluminum. So now I have my aluminum mounted. I have it sitting on top of a piece of MDF uh, so it can cut all the way through. The mounting method is double-sided tape and I'm also using the clamps. Hopefully I figured it out well enough that nothing bumps into anything else during the cutting. I've got dust collection and uh, since it's a longer carve, I, I'm running the dust collection off of an impeller, um, like a full-size dust collector that can run for longer. I'm trying to use as many pockets as I can uh, to see what the effect is I'm using a single flute mill. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna run it and see what happens. The carve is finally over. It sounded like a sick, 
chainsaw for that entire cut. It was, uh, it estimated at 19 minutes. It was at 22 minutes. The main thing I'm gonna check now is did the end mill survive? whether or not uh, the ruler actually fits into that, which is the actual whole point of the whole project. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It already, you know, it really actually looks like it, there is some chip weld or something. It doesn't look like it's in great shape. Yeah, it's not in great shape. That's after only one small job. I've kind of pooched the, uh, the bit, which makes this an expensive uh, proposition. These are cheap bids. It was five for 20, but um, it's like I measured it with the calipers. It's one to one, but yeah, this, it never really plays out like that. I set up a new file and I erased everything else or just deaded it. And I'm just cutting the pocket again. I'm gonna make it half a mil bigger and then I'm just gonna keep expanding it uh, slowly until we go where we want. Everything's still zeroed. Everything's still good. I'm actually gonna, since it's doing hardly anything at all, I'm gonna run it without dust collection. Uh, it's, it just finished. Now I'm gonna go up and out of the way and I'm gonna examine the fit. Might do another half mil because we don't want it to be pressure fit in there. Unplug this thing, shut it down. I'm gonna take this off and examine it at the workbench a little bit. Okay, let's look at this overall. You know, one side of this is actually really nice. This side has got some crap on it and it's a little irregular. This is a little irregular. The holes look decent. They didn't go all the way through, but almost. I can fix that with drilling and tapping. Overall, not bad. And this is actually the reference edge. This could have been the reference edge too, but this is the reference edge. So uh, it's nice that this is nice and straight. Check the ruler again. Yeah, this is good. So look, let's look at what's good and what is not so good. The cut that it made on the outside where there was hardly any material is actually really nice cut. It's actually off square. So that tells me that the bed is not square or my material was not square. It's really, it's only a quarter of an inch and it's actually really off square, which is concerning. That's gonna have to be uh, an issue to to be dealt with. That aside, the cut on the outside is good because it was not taking away that much material. I think this almost simulated what's called an adaptive cut where it slowly, it goes in deep and it slowly carves away everything to not stress out the bit. Uh, on the other side, where it actually had to sort of make almost a slot, it was making like a thin, pocket here, but I could tell there was a lot of vibration. And there's a lot of gouging, um, which means that, or the whole CNC was vibrating quite a bit and it was just jumping and gouging. So that's, that's no good. If you had to sell this for any reason, that would not be a pleasing aspect to it. Also, let's do an update on the, on the bit. Actually, the bit survived. It was just a little bit uh, gummy. I cleaned it off and uh, looked at it in a loop. It's still doing pretty good actually. Let's wrap this up. This whole review is based on just a couple of first blush tests of, uh, you know, where I was just going for it, basically. Watched all the other videos I could on this unit, and I watched people cutting aluminum and steel and cutting pretty aggressively. I tried those same aggressive cuts in an earlier test and it just wasn't happening. It was too, too much vibration. Um, it was, the whole system was going nuts. So, what was the difference between my experience and their experience? I'm not sure, there's a lot of variables. Um, it could be the tool path, the programming of the cut, which makes a massive difference. It could be the type of bit, the type of aluminum, uh, the work holding, vibration issues. I think it's kind of causing gouging and some funky stuff in the cut. Maybe a uh, suggestion is to, to mitigate vibration, maybe bolt it down to something that is uh, heavier. Once again, the CNC is only a small component of your overall cutting experience. Um, the bit, the tool path, the material, the holding, everything else 
really makes a massive difference once you jump into metal. When you're cut, if you're cutting wood with this, it's just going to be easy breezy. It's 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 definitely stiff enough and enough po uh, power in the motor to to do it. But as soon as you get into metal, it's a whole different story, um, and you really got to think about what you're doing. So a little bit of work to be done, a little bit of a learning curve, and you're going to have to think of all the other elements. But I think this really has the potential when you get everything together and you get it all dialed in to, um, to really be a good little machine. I'm definitely looking forward to using it in the future for a few more projects. Thank you to Jim Mitsu for letting me review this machine and uh, it was a very interesting experience. Thanks for watching.